Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 2023 Derby City Classic One Pocket Division round number two. As you see on your screen, we've got two elite players in Fetter Gorst and Roberto Gomez. This is a race to three. We're playing one pocket. Each player will has a have a designated pocket. Looks like Fetter concedes the lag. Roberto Gomez wins the lag. So if Roberto Gomez breaks to the top side of your screen, commonly the lower left pocket will be his. He will be shooting for eight of any balls to win the game. Eight of any balls to win the game. Any foul will cost you a ball, meaning if you don't get a rail, you'll owe one. If you hit two or more balls with your hand or your cue, you owe one. If you scratch, you owe one. They alternate the break. Ball on the break is a re-rack. Three foul rule is in effect, and there are no jump cues, which I think is, is great for the game of one pocket, and they should consider limiting that in rotation pool. That's just my opinion. I didn't say get rid of it. Limit it. I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer, and I am here with you to watch this awesome match. Now, Roberto wins the lag, right? This is a race to three. I immediately put him as a slight favorite. Uh, he's hit this a little heavy. He's caught the one a little heavy, not contacting the second ball as full as he should have. Notice that nothing has really opened up besides the two and nine. I don't know, and I apologize ahead of time. Railbirds TV is doing the best they can to bring us this live action, but this angle is all we have today. So it's gonna be tough at times to see everything that they have, but I immediately like this shot. If Fetter cannot see the nine, and this tells me he cannot see the nine fully, Fetter looking to come off the two, play it to his side, and bring the cue ball back into 4 5 11. I don't feel like he got as much out of the two that he wanted, but he did great with the cue ball. You really want to catch that a little fuller, even if you have to put a little inside spin on cue ball. Roberto immediately going to clip this and send him back over behind the pile. And obviously a little weak there. We're only into the second inning of the first game. Therefore, these guys are going to probably take a couple seconds to get loose. Pretty tough draw, in my opinion, with 500 players in a one-pocket tournament at the Derby City Classic draw each other in the second round not ideal for these guys but it's great for us it's very good for us and I don't know that Birdo can kick to the back side of that nine it looks as though he really has to swerve it uh, going from the top side of the stack He's looking to do something with the two maybe draw back down behind the nine but the problem with that is that where's the two going and excuse me it's fetter at the table i just don't know if he can get to the nine from the top end Kicking at the top side of the three probably isn't any good with the nine looming over Roberto's pocket. Looking to take a one rail kick. The only problem is that Roberto's going to get to see the back side of that stack. Probably no matter what, unless he gets hooked behind the nine. Speed's okay. Is it going to get there? It's too shallow, I think. Yeah, a little light-handed. I don't know if that was the right decision. Berto immediately going to the nine ball. Looking at the blue two for position. Do you elevate on this or can you level out? Elevating makes it much tougher to pocket the ball. The cut doesn't look 
severe, but it still looks thin enough that I can imagine he's got to be very accurate. Sometimes if you warp this cut with like a high left, the cue ball will bend off that second rail and you can splash the pack. I don't know if that's available, but it really looks like it could be available, and I'm wondering if that's what he's looking at. Yeah, I think he's looking to... But he's elevating, and I don't that's the right way to splash this stack. Oh, he's just chose to hit it easy. He doesn't like it. And I don't like it either. So I can't blame him. Is the three ball combination available? The the 15 10 3. Yeah, and that's what he's looking at. The problem with this is I think the 14 stops the cue ball from coverage, right? So if he shoots this, he's got to put it down. Otherwise, you could leave a bank on the 10. Yeah, it might be fairly free, actually. I think you're going to open up the... You might even open up the 11 or the 5. You're going to put a lot of weight into the 14. Berto definitely likes to overlook the situation. Buckle your seat belts, he's shooting this. Oh, and it's turned out pretty sweet. Doesn't want the cue ball on the rail, but I know he's happy with where he's at. I certainly feel like he's got to cut the stripe nearest the six. The only issue is, as you can see, the cue ball's going to come off the bottom of the six and go into the ball, so he's got to hit it with a little pace. Not an easy shot. Yeah. Actually, the cue ball caught the six a lot fuller than I had expected, so he just had to pocket the ball and take what he's got. Well, he's not looking at the combination of the four. You could send something that direction. I think he's overlooking something here. Yeah, he might have overlooked something there. Fetter can just take a foul one rail out of this, or two rails out of this. Yeah, he is on one, I believe. But I think he had something better there, Roberto may have overlooked the situation and we're all guilty of that right better doesn't want to be on two so he's trying to come off the bottom of this ball versus just take care of the cue ball and take your foul very hard to three foul somebody in this game i feel like this is risky got a lot out of it but if you take the foul and put him down here in the lower left corner, I think you're going to put him in a little bit more of a trouble position. Yeah, here Roberto can bank the 12, I believe it is. I don't know that you need to cut at the 11, or is he just feathering it? He won't get to the rail on that top side, but this is pretty good. I don't believe Fetter can kick to the lower side of the blue two towards the 11. Does Fetter take a chance here and shoot? I know it sounds crazy, but is there an opportunity to cut that stripe near his oar? He shoots so good. I mean, he's just a straight shooting machine. His mechanics are as good as anybody on the planet, if not the best on the planet. Trying to look at his options here. I know one thing, if I shot as good as Fetter, I'd probably be shooting at everything. 
could swerve. I think he can swerve below the two and go into the 11, but controlling it's really risky. I don't know that he knows what's going to happen there. Is he looking at taking on the cut? He is looking at taking on the cut. So say it's true. Let's see what he does. If he's playing this cut, cue ball's probably going to the edge of the five. I think if he takes it on, he's better than 50% to make it. That's how good this young man shoots. Long bridge. Notice the long bridge. Does diminish accuracy. Hear Jeremy Jones talk about that quite a bit. He actually hit the ball really well. I know the result doesn't look like it. Just overcut it a fraction. Went into the five like I thought. Look, if he pockets the ball, he's back in the game. Possibly got a chance to win the game. Can't fault him for shooting it. Sometimes in one pocket, you've got a gamble. He took a gamble. He lost. I think he was 50% to make that ball. Let's see what Roberto can do from here. He's playing for six. Okay, that's that's pretty automatic. He can come one rail up the step here. Yeah, so he's got the bridge. I didn't think that was the exact angle he wanted, but it, it kind of fooled me on the screen. Federer's going to give this up. Roberto's going to take game number one. Just like that, there's a new leader in the clubhouse. His name is Roberto, a.k.a. Superman Gomez. Now let's see what Fedor Gorst can do. Thank you very much to Bad Boys Billiards. Hustlin' Clothing USA. JB Custom Cases. Jerry Olivier Custom Cues. And Lipman Lights. The best in the biz. Alright, let's see if Federer can break these balls a little better than... Berto did last game. Oh, he's definitely hit him cleaner. Didn't get that 12 quite up front of the pocket like he wanted. I immediately see that Roberto could go to the 7. Is Roberto looking at cut on the 3? Boy, that looks real steep. A lot of these angles are a little misleading on the screen, but that one looks steep. I don't see any reason to shoot at that right now. Yes, I, I like coming off the seven and, and, and trying to put him where he just put his finger. The key here is controlling the seven ball. You don't want the seven coming back to where he's got a straight back. So you don't want to overhit this. And that's, that's what he was conscious of. They're very well controlled. Very well controlled. Not only that, notice that he's put the seven in a position where if Federer comes down here to this lower right side, he could entertain a bank. Yeah, actually he's put the seven in a great position, which is going to cause Federer some problems. Federer's going to have to think about this one.
I think Fetter can see all of the 15, meaning that he could put Roberto behind the three. But the concern with that is that Roberto is going to reply with some type of pressure, probably coming to his hole with the seven and laying that cue ball down there on the top left side. So Fetter's trying to eliminate that two or three shots in advance. I almost don't mind two railing the seven towards where the cue ball is now and playing the cue ball to the top rail, playing all cue ball, right? Go ahead and tease Roberto. Go ahead and trick Roberto. Let's trick Roberto this time, right? Go ahead and leave that cue up there on the top rail. Bring the seven to your side and allow Roberto to try and take a whack at that three. I don't think it'll happen. I don't even think Roberto would shoot it. Here, if he's doing what I think he's going to do, it's all cue ball. Basically, two rail to seven towards where the cue ball is at now. Focusing on the cue ball. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. I really like the shot that I called. I think this is okay, but... Pretty sure Roberto can bank this five and come three rails with the cue ball. I know he can bank at the two and do something with it. Oh, and he's got a combination bank here. It looks pretty tight to me, though. The 11-1 combination bank follow forward. Yeah, you could see he was apprehensive to shoot that. These balls have suddenly opened up. If Fetter can handle that three in some way, somehow, these balls have opened up in a good way for Fetter Gorst. The 11, 5, 10, 12, all looming are all saying, shoot me, shoot me. He's just got to remove the three somehow or get him behind the three. Note that the seven is not up table. There's no threat up table for Fetter. Yeah, this, this shot here is very important. Even if you could take a foul point between the 15 and 1, if the, if the angle suffices, you could take a foul between the 15 and 1 playing the cue ball two rails behind the 3. That would be ideal. Looks like he's going to come off the 15. Oh, he is playing my shot. Well done, Fetter. Well done. Yeah, so he's he's instantly cut everything off for Gomez. And I don't know if Gomez is going clean here or clipping the three, but he's going to two-rail kick. Yeah, and he's come off three. It's going to be a little weak. I think Fetter's going to take a cut at this stripe. And it's thin. It's very thin. We're playing on four and a quarter inch pockets. Yes, it's new cloth. These pockets are playing very true. I don't know what type of English he can use here. Can he spin this and come between the four and two? Or can he chop it with a little center right, come back and forth, up and down? I think first and foremost, you've really got to focus on pocketing the ball. Federer owes one. Big shot here for the Russian robot. Well, no problem. And he's pinched it just perfectly to get down here for the orange five. What a hit that was. 
everything kind of opens up now. He, he's got some work to do. He needs to carry an angle on this 15 that's low, right? If he can carry some type of an angle there and go into the blue two at some point, I think he can run these balls. Does he play the 10 now? If you're going to play the 10 now, I'd play the 5 first, and then carry your angle with the 10. I think he's immediately to the 10. Okay, and this is the angle that I was talking about. I think it's good to just brush the 2 here. Might actually... It's lit. That makes the shot so much more difficult yeah if you have to punch this that the control becomes much tougher okay he's, he's not he's looking like he can, can brush the two here that's what he's done he's executed it perfectly now everything kind of opens up right at minimum here, he can get the 1, the 3, the 5, and the 11. He's playing for 6. Don't forget, he owed 1. The 9, and, uh, nine is also available. So, the entire path has just changed. The entire pattern's changed, I think. Yeah, I think going to the 3, then the 9 is available. It's all personal preference here. But I'll bet whatever he does is probably the right route. Wants to get off the rail. Carried a good angle there. The only problem with the 9 is it could stop you, right? It's kind of why I like picking off the open balls first. I don't know how open this 9 really is. Can you get above it here? Okay, he wants to stay below it. I just don't know exactly what's going to open up here. I'm looking at the 14. It's going to the 8. And I feel like it's hard to even move the deuce and the 6. Yeah, this is kind of what I was talking about. I, I I understand it's natural and you feel like you just want to get to the nine because you can open these balls up, but I don't know how necessary it was because he's got everything open anyway. You could take the nine later. He's going to go forward? I think he's got to go forward in order to open the two and six up. either here nor there but I think if he comes up to the five he's better off there let's see what happens he really doesn't like it here's why the, all the momentum's going into the 14 which is going to go into the eight he's got to go forward here force follow into those balls the six and two okay he's punched it I definitely didn't see anything good happening there if you're going to punch it Felt like force followed through the balls, but it might have been tougher to make the ball. So, in his position where I think he could have got at least two more balls by going to the 5 and the 11, or the 5, 9, 11, now he's playing for three. And then I immediately look at the eight. I think you could bank that pocket speed play all cue ball worried about the spot ball he does oh one Fedor definitely not a veteran at one pocket does have a lot of experience he has played it the last year and a half to two years quite a lot but he's still learning the game, like the rest of us. 
see, I like going forward here. I feel like drawing this. The scratch isn't available if you go forward. I feel like drawing this, you risk leaving a bank. Yeah, pretty clever though. The spot ball's cut. The 13's cutting the spot ball off. But if you go forward, I feel like it might put more pressure on Roberto. Roberto kicked to the bottom side of the eight at worst. Neither here nor there. It was a nice run by Fedor. Still in control of this game. Well on his way to tying the matchup. Does the five bank, though? Like, that's the only thing I'm concerned about is, are you leaving something for this man to get back in the match versus when you go up table, you know that you've got him pretty well sewed up. Wow, that's going to cost him. Yeah, I think that's going to cost him there. He tried to combo bank the ball and just stick him in the stack. Caught the combination ball a little thin. Ball come back and kissed those balls, opening the cue ball up. Fetter looking like two goes. Gets tight. Just got to twist this. With left English, it will throw the two up past four. Huh. He's really eyeing this down. You were just going to hit it easily. It had a pocket. It had a full pocket. Fetter Gorst is going to take game number two in this race to three. One to one. Thank you to our sponsors, Diamond Billiard Products, best tables in the world, Ian Simonis, Simonis Cloth, Aramith Billiard Balls, the best balls on the planet, Outsville Rack, AccuStats Video Productions, and Masters Billiard Chalk. Thank you guys very much for your support. I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. Do us a favor if you get a chance. Go ahead and go to YouTube, Railbirds TV. Hit that like and subscribe button, please. Hit the notification bell. Keep following this channel. They're bringing great one-pocket action, great bank pool action, and great all-around Derby City classic action. Roberto Gomez to break in game number three. This is an ideal break. Cue ball's in an ideal position, utilizing the stack for coverage. He's opened up five, five balls to where Fetter's got to defend. Let's take a look at what we're looking at here. I, I mean, if you go up table to the lower right corner... You could double Roberto, or excuse me, yeah, you could double Roberto up there. But I don't see a way to get there. He's going to have to do something pretty passive here, I believe. Unless he can see the 12. Might be able to bank the 12 into the 13 and draw his cue ball two rails back up in the corner very aggressive and I don't see a lot of good things happening there just by the way it's laying and that's actually what I believe he's looking at huh very good break so I teach this and talk about this in some of my one pocket clinics but immediately after the break a lot of times you'll see like the eight and nine the way they are 
it seems like in one pocket, when you break them good, they end up like this. You can always take a foul to the top rail. I would use the lower long rail first, going to the top rail. That's how you can control the speed. But you could take a foul up there, putting the pressure back on the other guy. It just kind of flips it for you, right? Okay, I'm going to let him shoot the five from all the way up there, frozen to the top rail. If he doesn't make it, I don't believe it's free. So the foul is an option. He's at the table. I would expect and assume whatever he does is probably going to be the right shot. I'm just pointing out some options. Can't quite tell what he's seeing here. Is he shooting the 12 or the 13? Can't tell which one. Oh, that's pretty unlucky. He actually could see the 12 to the top side of the 13. Trying to sweep everything, possibly get something to his side. And coverage with the cue ball. He got a bad double kiss with 13 and 12, leaving Roberto a shot. It's fairly unlucky there. Pretty creative shot with a lot of control. Yeah, and if you'll notice, Roberto is definitely hampered with this double rake system he's got going on. Um, you might be better off. Well, he can't even make a bridge. He's literally over the stack. This is something you've got to be careful with. Because of the closeness of the 11 and 14 and all those balls, you move two or more, it's a foul. Oh, jeez. Well, he did a lot better than I would have, I can tell you that. I couldn't even hold those two bridges, let alone make that shot. Excellent job by Roberto, Roberto Gomez. And now he might have something in the stack. Of course, I see the available bank, but does he have something even better? See, here's, here's a little, I think he did this earlier. He's not overlooking the stack at all. He just immediately went to that. Yes, it laid really nice to do this, but take a look at the stack. I think if Roberto has any false play in the game, sometimes he gets blinders, and we all get blinders on at one point or another, for sure. But watch Alex Pagulayan. He will look at everything before he pulls the trigger. He's for certain what he's shooting is right when he plays the game. Fetter possibly looking to take a foul two rails behind the 10. It's not going to get there. So he is going to 0-1. But it isn't terrible here. The kick to the top side of the seven doesn't really look like it's that great. You're not going to get a lot of motion your direction. And the eight's looming up table to where you could sell it out. He's missed it. That, that required a very thin hit, so I understand how you can miss it. It's better than hitting it fat. Allowing Fetter a look at the nine and stripe by Roberto's pocket. Fetter looking up table like, can I bank this eight and where can I leave cue ball to make things difficult on Roberto? I don't think he can. Two rail kick below the nine and ten. It's an option, but look at Fetter, right? Not a fully seasoned one pocket player, but he's always surveying the table. Mm 
Trying to catch one of these balls. Definitely hit it hard enough this time. Nice hit. Roberto immediately going to the nine, and he wants to chip the edge of this nine and come around behind the pile. You've really got to hit this accurately. You do not want to catch the bottom of the pile. Well done. Very well done. Federer is probably going to kick to the bottom side of this nine. He could bank at the eight, swing the cue ball. I think 13's in a way. When I say I think 13's in the way, I think 13's in the way of the cue ball. Federer one to one rail the eight and swing the cue ball three rails. I think the 13 is in the way. It's a little steep anyway. No time to do something like that. Coming off the seven. Okay, he is. You see what he tried to do there? He tried to glue him to the nine. I don't necessarily know that I would even touch those balls if I was Federer. They weren't doing much for Roberto. Taking a foul. I think that's a great decision, to be honest. Because the seven was in such a bad position to kick at if you're Federer, or excuse me, if you're Roberto. Taking a foul cuts him off completely from the nine and ten. You're trying to put those balls in a position that you kick at in the next inning or two. But the way they laid, you couldn't. Having a little discussion on who owes what? They each owe one. So let's just keep it moving, boys. Maybe I should go down there and tell him. I'm gonna let him argue. right so they're discussing both players owe a ball do they cancel each other out and this is a new rule here this year at derby city classic to kind of speed things up and they do cancel each other out so i apologize obviously this isn't common one pocket but it makes sense there's another rule as well if the ball is hanging in your opponent's pocket and you each need one you can't jump the cue ball off the tape, you have to follow it in. Which is an interesting rule, because if there's a ball hanging in this lower left pocket, and the cue ball's on the lower left rail, up table, it's impossible to fall in. So how do you follow that in? So that's an interesting rule as well. I get it though, they don't want anybody getting injured. There's hundreds of people here at the Derby City Classic. I think that's a classy rule as well. So let's carry on. Federer looking to kick to the bottom of the nine. Roberto really didn't move the seven into a great position to kick at yet because of the three. He's hit it weak. He's got there. He had plenty of time to go to school on that kick. He's done it like three times now. I think what Roberto's doing is right, though. I think you've got to keep kicking one rail into the Maroon 7 and try and do something to lodge it free of the three. Because if you do, then you're going to get an opportunity to really kick with some power. This is okay, but Fetter can just kick to the bottom rail into the nine. A lot of top players don't want to go backwards a ball. And in reality, playing this game, it's negligible, right? If that ball helps you to advance in the game, then it's really negligible. So I think he missed an opportunity at trying to lodge that seven. 
up in there. And now Fetters not only made a good hit, but he's tied those balls up. Roberto, I get the sense, feels like he's got to kick at this stack hard, but I don't see a lot of good things happening due to where the red three is. I wouldn't worry about the nine yet either. Yeah, I think he's got to think about this one. One thing you do have to worry about is leave Fedor eight. So if you soft kick to the seven, you could leave the eight. Now that nine doesn't go, that's a problem. I think that's what he's thinking about. So maybe moving the nine now is okay. Maybe a little low, low right English, swinging cue balls two rails behind the stack. Or even a center right English. Yeah, I think he's got to do this. He's done excellent. Wow. Wow, pretty great shot right there by Roberto Gomez. Note the 9 and 10. What's wrong with banking the 8 towards your pocket and leaving the cue ball doubled up up here on the top, top right diamond? I just don't know if there's anything wrong with that. Plus the 3-7 look really good. I don't know that I would be too worried about this 9 right now. I might look at 10. But he's so comfortable. He's kicked at this 72 times in the last 20 minutes that he knew he was going to make a good hit there. Seven is still in a troubled position to kick to the top side. So they're playing a little cat-mouse game right now. And I can't figure out who's winning. Roberto said, I've had about enough of this. I want to go up table. I don't think that's the right... Don't know what other option he has, though. He could clip the 9 or he could kick to the 13 I feel like soft kicking to the 7 and lodging it just a little bit more could be a real good option we could see the whole 13 that changes everything my apologies tough to see the angles he's got on this table at times does Feder have a window to the 9 leave the 8 has him Yeah, I don't know. Now, obviously, the 3-7 is not available. It looks close, but it must be low. What I'm talking about is the 15-6, 3-7. Sure looks close to me, but he hasn't even looked at it. That tells me it's not available. Well, is he shooting? Or is he coming off the five, playing the four up table? Oh, he's kicking at the nine. Oof. That's tough to tell. I think it was good. Berto calls a foul. Okay. They're at the table, so they're going to know. I am not. Does Roberto have a look at the 13? Possibly to rail this 13. Possibly one rail it if you can see the whole ball. Looks to me like he's going to two rail it and swing the cue ball towards the top right corner. Just like so. How do you hit this ball? Center cup. Excuse me, close to center cup. Perfect speed. It's a big shot right there. I hate using the term free shot, but it seems like this eight is fairly free. Typically against great players, nothing is free. Down on this ball off quick. That's why he felt great over it. Don't know that he can see enough of the nine. He might have to play the combination and carry this cue ball.
how do you hit this? Do you hit this with an inside going towards the sack, or do you just hit it with a low playing position? And that's what he's doing. Oh, he's hit it really well. Very accurate shot maker, Roberto Gomez. What does he go to next? Does he just get to the other side of the stack? Possibly playing the 7 to 12 off the 4 and sticking him? Very good possibility, actually. Wants to get a little higher than that, I think. Okay, this is what he's going to do. He's done quite well. He's got a lot of coverage. Better can see the entire four ball, but that's about it. Good long route kick. To the inside of the 12. Pretty high percentage to do that. Definitely doesn't love his position, though. He owes one. Now faced with a four to negative one deficit. I think you've got to take the long rail kick and split the 12 in the rail here. What does the 7 look like? I guess the 7 is low again. Note the 15 going straight to the 6 and 3. 7's got to be going low. He's looking to utilize the 4 to come in at 12 somehow with the cue ball. Yeah, he is. I just feel like the risk of scratching coming at that angle is a little bit higher because he's got to use some right-hand English. And if you catch the 12 just right, you can easily scratch. I don't know that he'll hit it at the pace to where he could scratch, but it's definitely available shooting it this way. You can't scratch at it taking a long rail kick because of ticky. You're going to ticky and the cue ball's going to come off the rail. This way you can scratch at it. Note that he's going to use some right English. <sighs> he's done pretty good. A lot of people will say, well, he got fortunate there. He definitely didn't get fortunate there. He hit it at which pace he knew the cue ball would hold up. Yes, it's awful close to scratching, but he hit it at the right pace to hold up. Excellent shot. He removed the four and at the same time got the 12 out of dangerous position. That's interesting. I like the shot. I thought he might just clip two and stick him behind the balls. Speed was fairly great on that. You know, see if Federer can bank two. The problem is, and I say this a lot, I don't see a big future in it. Bank the five. I don't see a big future in either one. looking at something else he knows the future isn't bright with either of those balls if he continues to grind try and get yourself out of this tough position good things can happen yeah, you could punch the seven the back of the 12 and stump you up clearing everything I think that's available
trying to look at what he's looking at, it's very difficult. kind of stumped. I don't know if that was a good or a bad shot. Uh, I'm a little bit stumped. Might not have been terrible. You got some things opened, but I feel like these balls really favor Roberto. Fetter can easily get something from this, possibly a bank of some sort. I don't know why Roberto wouldn't just follow this ball, putting him down behind the... That's why that's even better. I didn't what type of angle he's got there. Yeah, so I guess that tells me the shot, Fetter shot, wasn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't ideal. I, and I do apologize, guys. The angles that I, that I'm working with aren't the best. Typically, a straight-on view of the table you can see pretty much everything, angles and what they have. This is a little difficult, but it's much better than nothing. And Railbirds TV is doing everything they can to give us some great action. And great action is what we have. One to one, race to three. Roberto leads four balls to negative one. Fetter is on the grind. Looking to spike this four straight back. I guess I guess he's probably gonna play the cue ball with a pretty heavy low ball. Maybe try to shorten the four up and stun the cue ball over somewhere maybe behind the seven. He's really bearing down on this shot. He's probably one of the best on the planet at it. If not the best at this bank. Yeah. Wow. That's all you can say is wow. What a hit. Better worst. He's not carried an ideal angle on the seven. Q balls obviously towards the top side of the table. I don't think he can shoot it. Of course he can shoot it. I just don't know if he can get anything out of it. Okay, he's going to play it and leave Roberto long. When they are four and a quarter inch pockets, so when you get a ball close to your pocket, or when you're leaving your opponent long, it puts quite a bit of pressure on them. Especially if you leave them some type of shot that's distance with the cue ball on the rail. I think he's going to try and knock this stuff down and then play some type of a ticky on the blue two. Maybe a cross on the blue two. The angle looks pretty steep to me. Is he straight enough to where he can juice this up with maximum left English and come one rail over to cut the three? Doesn't look like it to me. I 
I know he can just bunt the seven, like almost pocket speed, and leave the cue ball flat with the two, basically leaving Roberto straight. And then he could ticky kick the two towards his side and drift the cue ball down behind that stripe that's nearest Roberto's pocket. I think that's what he's thinking right now. He's definitely thinking about what he does after the seven. Looks like he's hitting some type of high ball. So maybe the angle isn't as steep as I think. He's definitely giving it some time, if that tells you anything. This is an early round, right? So you've got tables going all around you, players all over the place, fans everywhere. And that's the cool thing about the Derby City Classic. He's not so sure. Looks to me like he wants to either punch two rails to the top rail and around, or maybe, and now I think he's. Oh, yeah, so he didn't really have the aim that he needed to get there. That was a highly difficult shot. Very, very difficult. Kind of surprised he took it on because he was back in the game. If he knocks the seven down and just leaves the cue ball on the top rail, then plays a ticky kick to, the, to his side on the two, he's back in the game. So I'm a little surprised he took that chance. And an early gift for Roberto Gomez in this game. Playing for three. As you see, they are there. You could go to the 5 now if he'd like, but he probably wants to get on the 3 and 12 if he can split that gap. He's going to ensure that he gets to the hill as far as balls. He's going to the 5. Now he's kind of steep here. Got options. He can go to the solid, which is the 7. Or he can try and kill this cue ball and cut the three. That's what he's done. Take cut on the three. Wow. And Roberto Gomez takes a two to one lead on Feder Gorse. Early in round two of Derby City Classic Pocket. I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. This is this is interesting. I, I wouldn't have expected the match to go quite like this so far. Don't get me wrong, Roberto Gomez is clearly one of the top one-pocket players in the world. But that's all it takes, right? Nice break there by Feder Gorst. You know, Roberto's got to feel good, though, leading 2-1 to one in this match. He's got to feel good about where he stands. He's played really solid, in my opinion. He's, he's kept Feder pretty much locked up most of the time. And you can see that in how Feder played the 7 last game. I feel like he tried a little too much. Very tough shot, especially on cloth. 
you got to maximize the English. You don't exactly know the aim. But that being said, it's still a race to three. Feder only needs two games. And he's broke the balls very well here. You can see on the screen we've got a perfect angle that Roberto cannot see the bottom side of the 11. He can probably only actually see about half of the ball. He's got problems here. Can he see enough of the five to come off the top side and below the four? Players typically don't want to do that anyway because you're going to leave some type of turn. But it might be all he has. He's looking to leave the cue ball right there. Is he using that off the 15? So I see a shot that he could play. He could play the 15 off the bottom of the 11 and just stick him right there on the 8 and 3. That's definitely an option. It looks like it's available too. And you'd be amazed at the action the 15 get off of other balls if hit it with a little pace. This is a shot these guys are great at, right? So you're banking the 15 off the bottom of the 11. It could sweep the 4 and a couple other balls your direction. Stick them on top of that 3 and 8. It's basically a stop shot. I don't think he sees the shot. Yeah, he doesn't see the shot. And it's laying well because I have a good angle at this. Maybe it'll jump out at him the longer he looks at the table, but right now he does not see the shot. Another problem with this game, these type of situations, is it's easy to talk yourself out of something that's accurate, right? We've all done it. We know what the right thing to do is, and we end up doing the wrong thing, and we know ahead of time that what we're doing isn't right. It's a big problem in this game. So who does that less is the one that typically wins. He's arguing with himself right now on what the right shot is. I don't know how he can't see the shot that I'm talking about, but it's definitely available. If he's trying to do something with... Are they going to go forward with this? I don't believe he realizes he can stop on team. Even if you don't make contact with them, and the 15 goes into the 10, you can stop. But it's even better if the 15 contacts the bottom side of the 11, sending the 11 to your side, sweeping possibly the 4, but you're going to move something to your side of the table because you've got to hit it with speed. I really feel that this is the shot. Now he's looking to elevate on the 15. He's going back to his original shot. I don't think you can go forward here. You don't want to leave Fedor or something on the 4 or the 1. really don't know about the 11. Is he looking to bank the 11 to his pocket and leave him over here on the lower end of the table? I don't think he knows what he wants to do. Yeah, I don't like going forward. I really don't if I'm Roberto. Could cause major problems. Better so good at the straight back with control. And I know you say you don't want to play the you want to play the table one pocket. That's not necessarily the case. You hear Jeremy Jones speak about it often. You've got to play to the player's style. You've got to play to the player that you're playing. What's his strengths? What's his weaknesses? You've got to expose those weaknesses. And I think Fetter's biggest weakness in his one pocket game still to this day is moving. He hasn't played enough. He doesn't know every shot that's available. None of us do. But that's got to be his weakness, right? Therefore, the longer the game goes, it should favor you. Roberto Gomez.
boy, I just don't know what's wrong with stopping on the 15 right there. Placing the cue ball on 3 and 8. Huh. Not a huge fan. It's okay. He's going to get an opportunity to see another shot, live another day. Not a huge fan of that shot. I don't feel like he did near as much as he could have. Must have been something he really liked about it. This is ultra aggressive. He's got to get the cue ball back. The nine is a threat. And I think the seven's actually in the way of playing the eight six. You're not going to make it, or has the pocket cut off. So far, this has been a very good. Their player looked to go into the one loss. It, you do redraw every round. So they could play each other next round. It happens. Play each other next round and Feder win. They could play each other next round and Roberto could win, knock Feather out. This is how it goes sometimes in this in this format. But that's why it's so successful. Boy, he's gotta draw this ball back. Executed it really well. Really well. Yes, and I see the 15 immediately where Roberto might be able to get the cue ball behind the 4 and 6. This takes a little bit more of an accurate hit than you may think. He might have to hit a heavy ball, meaning a little bit fuller with some left-hand English. He's going to cut it free and thin, so if he hits it thin, he's not going to hit it as hard. Okay, yeah, he's played it thinner. Very well done. Just don't like pushing everything to Fetter's side there, but I don't think he had much of a choice. are looking to kick out of this one rail and put him up table. Second and third rail. He's going to leave him some type of a tester on the nine. This is what Fetter does that's really good, especially for a guy that hasn't played as much as some of the seasoned veterans. He surveys the table a lot like Alex Pagaline. He makes sure what he's going to do is the right play. Could just simply tick you to the bottom of the six and glue him right there. I don't see what that's going to do, though. You're going to give Roberto an opportunity to remove the seven, and it's probably just going to get or four, and it's probably just going to get worse. I think taking the two rail kick is probably the option. Fetter doesn't love it. I don't blame him, but sometimes you've got to take what the table gives you. He's worried about the nine. And if he doesn't get that cue ball closer, frozen to the top rail, he's worried Roberto's going to nine. Sometimes you've just got to let him go, though. I think this is the shot. Buddy, 
he's executed it really well. Very tough to judge that speed. Roberto immediately looking at the 17-9. I don't the cue ball will clear three. I like to play the 7-13-9 and stick him behind the six and four, but I just don't think that's available. Fetter hit this so well that I don't think Roberto is even going to consider shooting the night. He's looking for something passive, and I can't blame him. That's a real goal. You notice the space between the 7 and 10. There's obviously a lot of space between 13 and 9. This is where you weigh out your percentages. Bigger favor to just cut the nine in cleanly. Do I feel more comfortable shooting a three ball combination that's off angle and not even close to each other? He's gonna come with the three here. Eve. Oh my goodness gracious. I wish we could get a replay of that. What a shot was. What a shot that was. Yes, he left a cross corner on the two. Ten. Boy, he played a he played a basically an off carom. Shooting off the three. Two rails behind the six, carrying it to his hole. Kicking the four out at the same time. Look at the cue ball. Look at where it finished. What a shot that was. What a shot that was. So far, that's the shot of the match. Fetter might have a bank on this two or the ten. I get it. Boy, he hit that really well. Love the creativity. I think Fetter can bank the two, though, and go forward. I think it's far enough past the 14 to where the cue ball will get through. Have to use a high ball, maybe a touch of inside English. Boy, I can't get over the shot Roberto just shot. Very creative. I mean, yeah, it turned out wonderful. I feel like a lot could have got, gone wrong there, but he executed it so nicely. A little unlucky that the 9 and 5 tied up Roberto's side as well. Better definitely taking his time here. I think he's taking the bank on. He's going at 10. This isn't free. Well, you can't say much about that. Committed. Put all of his focus into pocketing the 10. He's done that. And he's got an opportunity to get a lot of balls here. See, he did not split his focus there. All the focus on pocketing that 10. Found the aim point. Dip down. To see if the one passes. Just surveying everything, which you can never do enough of, right? I don't think it's great to play slow, but you really have to make sure you see what's going on. For the three here. Or the 11. Now you can shoot the 8 as well if it passes. Come over for the 2. Which I really like. 
This is all player preference. Shoot the three now, you can shoot the 11. The eight passes, you can shoot the eight. I think you get the most out of it if you play the eight. But you could also play the three and get the angle on the two, maybe come up to the seven, five, nine. If you can knock the eight down with a pinch of inside English, you're going to get on the two. From there, really, it all opens up. And you don't have the pressure on you of completely selling out shooting the eight. Because you know the two is going to end safely. Excuse me, cue ball is going to end safely over here behind the two. He's trying to figure out what he likes best. So I think he thinks he can come up behind these balls here. Take the 11. I believe he wanted to get that straight. I feel like he's fairly straight here. I think he has a draw angle or a punch angle. He can also follow, but he's a little flatter than he wanted to be here. Yeah. Can't tell what he's going to come to next. feel like he's going to come to the two, maybe. Punch to the two. He wanted, to, he wanted to miss that seven. He wanted to draw past it and get on the nine and five. He'll be all right here. He stays level, stays still. Up behind the five and nine. Such a clean hit. No body movement. Follows through so truly as well. He always finishes with the stroke. Always finishes. Looking to have that angle. Over for the three balls on the top of the table. He only needs... He's got to play for three, so he needs the nine, the five, and another ball. So he wants to carry an angle here. And he's carried a perfect angle. Folks, we could have a hill hill match. We are two balls away from that. Berto Gomez did win the lag, and I touched on this early in the match. Winning the lag in a race to three is very, very valuable. Federer really taking his time. Kind of gives you the gravity of to this match. Guarantee you he feels like if he wins this match, he can win the tournament. Because this could be a finals match without any problems. Very pure. Playing for one. I don't know if he knows he's playing for one because he just looked at the eight. There you have it. My miscounting. Okay, 
Federer owed a ball. My apologies. Now Federer is playing for one. So he needed four back when I said he was needing three. Nice run. You get the feeling he could have somehow got all of those balls if he needed them. Very solid. I don't think he was ever out of line, except for when he drew into the seven. So this match is tied up. It's a race to three. Like I said, Roberto has the break. That. All right. Here we go, folks. Buckle your seatbelts. Hill Hill Thriller. The 2023 Derby City Classic. This is only round two. You could say this is a fairly tough draw for these two world champions. Got to give a slight edge to Roberto Gomez breaking the balls. They say that the break is worth a ball to a ball and a half. That's obviously over time. He could break the balls poorly and lose the game from it. It just uh, all depends. I do like his cue ball positioning, though. It's much easier to get the cue ball higher, more center out to the table, and he's done that. And in my opinion, he's broke these balls incredibly well. I don't think Fetter can see any of the 11 to two rail it out or do anything good with it. Immediately, I'm looking at the three. Very difficult to draw off the three and come below the nine. The seven kind of sticks out at me. Can he frame the seven into the bottom of the nine and do something with the cue ball? Can he kick to the nine? And this, this break was very good. I remember something that I'm always thinking about when getting out of the break is that you can take a foul, right? And if you have to take a foul, that's what it is. There's always a shot playing this game. That's the beauty of it. I can rest assure you he is going to take his time. Looks like he can see more of the 11 than this angle presents to me. So can he see enough of this 11 to 2 rail it out? Boy, it looks like the 7 has not hit. I guess he can. That tells you the angle that I'm working with. If he can see that much of the 11, then I am really fooled. Because I feel like the 7's got him covered. At least half a ball. Even taking a foul is difficult here. Yeah, this shot could... It could definitely be a match shot for Roberto. So he has to take his time and make sure what he does here is right. He doesn't want to just roll the cue ball in the back of the stack. That's like, you know, a golden rule. You never want to put your opponent on the opposite side of the stack or the correct side. He can just push things that direction. Can he see enough of this 11 and punch forward and get behind the 9? Oh, he had to swerve. Oh, cute. Very cute. He had to swerve, so he was half ball snookered. He knew he was going to give up the three, right? 
But he had to do something. He was in a bad position there. He's just got to take his chances and hope Roberto. Roberto is get down on that awful quick. He's just measuring it out. Yeah, he just had to take his medicine there, take his chances, and hope that Roberto comes to the table and under-executes something. I don't know. He really isn't entertaining three at all. He's entertaining this cross. I feel like this is tougher than the three. Just because of how close they are to each other. He's looking to two rail the cue ball out. Huh. And it, obviously the nine is a possible threat. You don't want to hit nine trying to cross this 11. So maybe Roberto bluffing. He's very good at that. Professional poker player in his past life. Amateur poker player in his true life. Boy, I don't know this. Well, he felt good about it. He's done well. Very well. He knew about it. He was at the table. He felt it. And he knocked it down. Now, can he knock this down? If he knocks this down, whichever one he chooses to shoot, I would assume the three. He's off to the races. I don't really feel like Fetter did anything wrong there. He did what he had to do. I didn't expect Roberto to take on that cross corner versus the three. Here we go. Big shot. Oh, he's hit it pure. The seven plays too, so he's hit that very pure. That opens everything up. Now he can go to the nine, then the two, then the one, or however you choose. Yeah, under the pressure, he's really come with it this game. Really can't fault Fetter. He was in a terrible position there. I guess he could have taken a passive foul, you know, uh, looking back. But I don't know that. I don't know that what Fetter did was wrong. I think he. I think he played a pretty nice shot. Roberto just coming with a great out under the circumstances playing for four do you tickle something open here or is the 13 already wired up he's gotten pretty steep on this guessing that if he can reach it then it's easy to control and easy to cut he has the 13 wired up here He sure acts like it is. If it's not, it's close. And Federer will be living behind that stack. Oh, and it is. But he didn't open him up enough. So he still needs one. We've got a little more to go. Maybe a fraction lazy there, right? Like, you, if you know that ball's wired, then hit them. And he knew it was wired. That's an error. Don't think that Federer Gorse can't come with an eight and out nowhere on this hill. So you have to be careful here because they are all in play. Interesting. Can he see the whole four? I don't think he can see the entire four, which can also cause problems. He doesn't like it, and I don't blame him. You know Fetter's going to stay aggressive 
no matter what you do here. Now, if Roberto could see the whole four, he could clearly bank it up table and just lay the cue ball down on the bottom rail. But that's clearly not the case either. So what do you do? You've semi-trapped yourself. Can you come off of this ball and put him behind the four? I think he can see the four. That's okay. He can see enough of the four. He was also an actor in his past life. Yeah, Federer wants to stay aggressive here. Possibly banking the 6 off the bottom of the 12. There's a couple issues with that. I don't know that it's laying right first off, second off. I don't know if he can make anything following it. The third off, it puts the 12 up table, which he doesn't want. He might be better off clipping this 4 and playing the cue ball in the bottom right corner. Just clip the 4 and put the pressure on Roberto to keep these balls down table. It's a possibility. And that's also a very thin hit. I make it sound like it's extremely easy, and it's not. You don't want to hit the four too thick. Send it to your opponent's side. It's not terrible. A little thinner. Just a fraction more speed. Because if you get Roberto on that rail, he's got work to do. What that shot just did, folks is it put Roberto kind of under the gun, right? The four is now in a position. If Roberto goes to the top left side anywhere of the table, he's got to protect against that bang. So something that simple can change everything. Oh, very, very cute. Very cute. Playing pretty much all cue ball there. He knows the object ball is going to two rail out. So this was a very good shot. Clearly the five and stripe are not on. Otherwise I don't believe Roberto would have ever even considered shooting that. And now Federer looking at the line where the six could go. Asking for a lot to catch the top side of the four, banking the six. But let's go back to when Roberto was running out and had the wired ball. What a game this could be if Fetter could steal this. Little lapse of concentration by Roberto. And this game is still going on. Obviously, this isn't an ideal situation either, right? Fetter's not loving any of this. He needs all the balls. He's looking to play a bank carom. Problem is, if he doesn't make good contact with the four, where does the six go? I think you do have to shoot the six, though, whether you shoot it in the 12 or four. It's kind of a preference. And he's going to the six. Needs a little luck here. Needs a little love. Well, this isn't terrible. This isn't terrible. Roberto would like to play that 14 off the 12 and just get it over with. But that isn't going to happen because he's going to splatter everything to Federer's side. <laughs> 
you could bank the six up softly towards the 14. Just play your cue ball down to that diamond, but you're worried about leaving Fetter some type of a straight back or cross corner. So can he two rail the 15 and stick him between the five and eight? Possibly worried about a kiss of some type there. One bad kiss, you could lose the match. This is all energy that Roberto didn't need to or want to spend or waste. Huh. Does Fetter have a look at crossing the six? If not, Roberto's done very well. Really good control. But if Fetter can get a look at crossing the six, he can get all of these balls. I will be surprised if he can cross the six. I would be surprised that Roberto just happened to leave that. I would have been certain that he knows where the cue ball is. Well, that answers a, that question. He cannot cross the six, so that was an excellent shot by Roberto Gomez. If you're going to do something with the 15, I don't think it's an easy two-railer. He'd have to get the cue ball back and forth to protect against the 14. I think you've got to just bump this to the other side. He looks like he's keying up to two rail it. Oh, he's hit it really well though. Really tough shot. Very difficult shot. Continuing to keep the pressure on Gomez. That shot was struck excellently. Roberto immediately going to the 15, so he must be able to follow. Did. Well, he's left him a clean look at the 8. Doesn't bank clean. It's a little different situation with this 2 railer. Don't think that you can clear the cue ball on that two railer, meaning get it back and forth. But if he shoots it, he believes he can. This seems touchy to me. Yeah, so he played all cue ball there. He two railed it, but he just wants to keep the balls down in play. This isn't bad. Continues to keep pressure on Roberto, but Roberto can come off of the six now without any problems or any risks. In order to get this cue ball back down here, Feder had to hit that a little thinner. That's how the 15 ended up where it did. Ooh, this might be the best look that Federer can get. Does he carry position? I'm talking about banking the eight, coming off the bottom of the five and 12. It does carry position. This is a big opportunity. I do see that it carries position. Federer knows it carries position. 
and it does bang. So this is an opportunity for Federer to get back in this match, in this Hill Hill game. So pay attention to the cue ball. It's going to tick you off the bottom of the 5 and then the bottom of the 12. I don't really even... This is a mistake by Roberto. I don't really even think there's a risk of selling anything out here. He's really got to focus on pocketing this ball. But Roberto made a mistake letting the cue ball get this high. I figured he would just bunt the 6 up, play the cue ball over there, you know, about half the distance up that it is. Federer Gorst knocks this down. He's going to get back in this game. Could win the game. This is 100% focus on pocketing the eight. Nothing else. Cue ball will take care of itself. He didn't follow it. Thought he would follow it. He stunned it a little bit. I expected something better out of that. I don't know how the QL just stopped there. Figured if he leveled out and followed it, would have come through the bottom of both of those balls. Maybe I misread it. That's very possible. This is bad news for Fetter Gorst. These balls do not favor him. Doesn't want to move the 15 nearest the 4. But I think he's got to. And just stick right there. Yeah, I think that's what he's got to do. Watch the 15. Make sure it doesn't come off the bottom of the 14. And there you go. So if he had that angle, I felt like maybe he could have hit it a fraction firmer. Might have created the angle on the 15 there, though. Roberto still knows he's got to be careful, even though he's got four balls clearly on his side. is well done has Fetter had enough of this and just goes ahead and banks it to 12 I wouldn't I would continue to grind you never know when your opponent could scratch foul somehow make a mistake everything can change never give up never give up keep grinding Come off the bottom of the 12 and put him flat. Maybe off angled on one of the straight backs. I don't know for sure what he's got here. It's not ideal, that's for certain. Maybe he feels like he's in a position where he has to bank at it. Statistically, you're probably going to lose this game. Can you come back and win the game by pocketing the bank? It's just very tough. I don't even think he's entertaining the bank. 12 does definitely bank, but I don't think he's going to entertain that. Problem is, where do you hide Roberto to keep him off of some type of straight back towards his pocket? Coming 
off the 14. Well, that's how you do it. Very good control there. Very good control. I don't think Roberto can bank at this 12. It's fraught with peril. Meaning a little risky. You've got to get these up table. Get it out of play. Get that cue ball over in the left top corner of the table. This is good. This is good. Feather might take a look. Feather might take a look at the five. You know at some point he's going to want to shoot because all that's going to happen going forward is these balls are probably going to get in a worse position and more out of play. He's aware of that. Problem is here, I don't think there's a free place to put the cue ball. If he shoots at this five, which he's, in my opinion, this type of bank, numero uno at, you've probably just got to go all out. So here we go, folks. Oh, he's drawing the cue ball back. And this is, oh boy, he's hit it. he hit it really well. Thought he pocketed the ball. He hit it just a fraction short. He had to catch that ball fat in order to draw the cue ball below the 6 and 15. It's possibly why it came a hair short. Better's not going to be thrilled with it. I can't blame him. Roberto's got options. Two rail the 14 to his side and try and bring the cue ball down. I don't know that he can cross the five over and play the cue ball up. Well, he's two railed it to his side and left the cue ball there, which is okay. He got a good rub off of 12. This is okay. The five is a big blocker. Better play in the combination bank. You can lose off of this. You definitely can't win off of it. I think you've just got to play simple. Knock the six over to your side, the top right side of the table, and just float the cue all down. Just play the game from here. Hope your opponent makes a mistake. You've come this far. Don't just give it away. Make him earn it. And that's how you want to think, right? When you need... All the balls and your opponent needs one. Make your opponent earn that ball. Really, really make him earn that ball. You'll be surprised at what can happen. Yeah, I feel like he feels like he's got to do something. The problem now with being aggressive is the 14, the 12, the 15, they're all in bad positions. So you know you can't win the game from here. It's different if the balls are positioned where you can win the game, but that's not really the case at this point. You don't have to complicate it. And there is a lot weighing in the balance of this match, right? You've got master of the table, which is the all around, and you've got this entire one pocket match. You don't want to go into the third round with a loss. Live to fight another day, play something simple. 
is a really good option. So I feel like he's just trying to force something that's not there. I've been there. We've all been there. But it's just not the time, Federer Gorst. Knock the six up and just put him right there behind the 15 or bring him all the way down, whichever one you want to do. Okay. He heard me. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want the six to end up there. I would have made sure it cleared those balls. It's not bad. You guys might immediately think he left a bank, but it's really not bad. The bank has zero future. And that's kind of why it's important to get the six free of everything else on your side of the table. Because if the six is free, now you've got to consider the bank. That's good. That's good. I like what he's doing. Cue ball got away from him a little bit, which could cause him problems. His next shot, especially if Roberto gets the, the white rock down on the rail but I do like that he's playing the game I was kind of surprised there that Roberto didn't test him and just get the cue ball on this bottom rail and see the way these balls are positioned I'm never going to consider banking anything right now whether he executes it or not I just don't think it's the right time come off of the 6 like 2 rail the 6 into the stripe whatever ball that is the 12 Play your cue ball to the lower end of the table, like the lower left, lower left corner. You're going after a bank where you, what can you get if you make it? But I think that you could really lose the game. But that might be wrong. I, I'm also possibly speaking in terms of how I play the game, which is not the right way to commentate. So I could be wrong, right? He, he might have a way to get this cue ball where he's got another shot, but puts pressure on Roberto if he misses the bank. Let's see what it does. He's playing it freely. Boy, he's so good at the straight back. So I was wrong, and he's put a great stroke on that ball, and it's possible that the camera angle misled me with the angle that he had on that ball because it looked too steep to me to be able to do that. But what an excellent shot. He hits that straight back as clean as anybody to ever live. Now... Did he carry the angle to be able to hold on the 15 and do the same thing? I feel like it's pretty straight. Or a little bit to the wrong angle. Do it on the 6. If he can do it on that one, he can do it on the 6. Just as easy as that bank goes in. It can rattle out, leave your opponent to bank. A lot of things can go wrong. Balls tell me that Roberto is a heavy, heavy favorite to win this game. So he is going at the six. Jeez. What a hit, though. He actually hit it really good. He doesn't like it. He's not... Uh, not in love with the result, but he hit it well. Mm. 
Bruno's doing what he's supposed to do. He's gotten all these balls in bad positions for Feder. And I do feel like Feder has possibly made a few errors towards the end of this game with his shot selection. Nothing major because he's pretty well handcuffed from the beginning. And Roberto's played a great game this game. I mean, he's played a really, really good game. Near perfect, in my opinion. Look at this cue ball. See, just doing something that simple can often cause some type of mistake for your opponent. to your side and bring him down or are you afraid to leave him the two railer do you just clip the five and leave it there and bring him down what do you do here yeah I think that's probably the safer option Put a little more focus into that cue ball if I was him. Yeah, look at the focus on this cue ball. Makes a difference. He's just got to roll the 14 up into those balls. He could bank the 14 to his side and go forward, but you've got to be careful. You don't want to leave a two-railer on the 15. Okay, he's doing fine. Roberto's just going to bring it back to his side. do not think it's the time to pocket that ball unless he's got an angle and can stick him up under the four. I don't know that pocketing 12 is the right time. He might have an angle to where he can kill the cue ball and stick him up underneath the four. like to know what's going through Federer's mind right at the moment. Sometimes we all get into a position when games are like this. You need all the balls where your mind just starts to go a little foggy. He's looking at pocketing that stripe, trying to stick him up under those balls. I don't think it's it's definitely not necessary because there's five other balls that are out of play. I don't know what it's really going to do for him yet. I would focus more on getting that cue ball frozen on the bottom rail. Maybe coming off the five, knock the five into the four and swing cue ball two rails to the bottom rail. It's something I like. I don't know if that's what he's liking or not. Well, the speed was excellent. Very good speed. I actually feel like he got a little unfortunate that he didn't get more going his direction. 
but the speed's key there, right? Roberto, I wouldn't have any problem let Roberto shoot this bank because if he hits it off a little bit, you're going to have a cross corner. I don't know if kisses in play. I feel like he can avoid the kiss with extreme left, but where does the cue ball end up? Do you sell the six out at that point? looking you sell the 6 or 15 out by trying to avoid this kiss can he avoid it using outside English using a heavier ball much flatter ball the ball will straighten out with the outside English that's what he's done. Look at this hit. Did he get a bump? Oh, he did. <laughs> Look at this. Okay. This is what Federer Gorse does. He can knock this six down. Let's say he hangs the 15 up or knocks it down. All of a sudden, he goes from needing them all to needing three. And that's what we love to see. Wow, he hit that cross corner with pace. I think that give him a little bit more accuracy. What a shot. Okay. If he can knock this 15 down or hang it up, he goes from needing seven to needing three. You've got to feel good about that. Believe me, it applies a lot more pressure to your opponent. Because now he knows all it takes is one mistake. I don't care where the balls are positioned. I can lose this game. Note the time that Fetter's taking on this bank. Really bearing down. Feel like this is going to be close, even though it's a very tough bank. Especially on new cloth. It's hard to judge exactly where this ball is going to go. Ah, it's come along. Needs to slow down. Yeah, Roberto's going to get a similar cross corner that Federer had. It's not quite as easy, though. It's a lot thinner. Watch out for the side pocket. Is he even shooting it? He's got to shoot it. Oh, he's hit it well, but it's not going to hang. So this hill-hill match continues. Will we have any more drama? Fetter looking to cross this. Cue ball is going to come off pretty hot here. It's a thin hit. Watch that top corner pocket. It's going to have some speed on it. Or it should have in order to get the ball to the pocket. Uh, he's caught it full. He's caught it on the safe side. You can't fault him for that. Here's the problem with that bank. If you hit it too thin, you seem to scratch in that top corner pocket quite a bit. Berto get down on the ball very quickly. Jeez, what a good hit that is. Wow. Wow. I mean, perfectly executed. So here we are again. Fetter's got options. He could play the 15 to his side of the table, crossing it, bring the cue ball down to the lower 
left side, or he could just nudge it up into the corner and just play the game. Is he looking to bank this ball? Boy, I just hate to give the game away after all of this work. I know he's great. I know he feels like he can make anything, but a lot of times that can be to your detriment playing this game. I feel like he's banking it. Really do. He is banking at it. Where's the cue ball going to end up? I feel like he's just got to do something passive here. Where's the cue ball going to end up? Huh, jeez. He could have easily caught that four ball going in and left Roberto straight in. It ended up pretty sweet, though. Let's say that he played it. And if he played it, that's pretty unbelievable. What a shot. What a shot. Wow. This changes everything. I don't think Roberto can get to the 15. If he can, he's got a good escape. Cross the 15, even not to make it, he can cross it to the low side of the table, to his side. But to me, it looks like he's snookered. And if that's the case, he's got a small problem. It was a big chance Federer took, and he did get away with it. Could have gone awry. Okay, he's going to bank the five to his side and bring the cue ball down behind the 15 here. Speed is key. Like that cue ball to settle a little. Yeah, Federer's going to definitely shoot this straight back. think he's got a problem with getting the cue ball out of the way. He's so good at this. He hits the ball very full. Gets it to turn. And if he happens to miss it, nine times out of ten, he misses it short. Pretty steep angle, but then again, the 10 was real steep earlier that he made look very easy. He just wants to be able to get this object ball clear if he doesn't make it, meaning no return bank for Roberto. He's going to twist this quite a bit. I wonder if he's considering going forward. The forward path that that ball would take would be similar to a Z. I don't like it. So yeah, he's considering going forward. Boy, can't you sell out the four and five here? Or is it not going to get quite to there? So this could be pocket speed. Uh, it's twisted. Yeah, I think he talked him out of that. Talked himself out of that a little bit. I think Roberto's got a two-railer here for the W. Oh, he's let up on it. I think it was on target, too. 
Yeah, he let up on that. A little body movement. He does get like that at times. That's all a result of the pressure that Fedor could be putting on him. Across this, I feel like it's a thin hit again. The kiss just barely missed. And Roberto's going to have to kick this out. Bank is not available. I that she'll kiss it, even without sign English. Well done. And we're back to square one. Once again, I think you've just got to roll this 15 up into the four and five. Take your medicine and play the game. Back in this game. Keep it simple. A lot of times we want to overthink these situations. And I think he's he's overthinking this situation now. Just bunt the 15 to the rail. Yeah, trying to do a little too much when it's not really there, uh, in my opinion. You're going to leave Roberto this four. I think he's going to want to get this down. He's going to get this close. You just feel it, right? Yeah, Roberto Gomez hangs his game winner up and take a look at the 15. It is out. Therefore, Fetter Gorst is forced to take a bank at the 15. Going back to the inning prior, Fetter, I feel, made a little bit of an error there. Could have just bunted the 15 up into that cluster of balls. Roberto had nothing at that point. Instead, tried to do a little bit too much, causing this situation. From what I'm looking at, this bank is highly difficult. Roberto Gomez is going to advance into round three without any losses. And Fedor Gorst is going to have to come from the backside, which is highly possible. Great effort. There you have it, guys. Roberto Gomez wins this round two match versus Fedor Gorst. I am Scott Frost. Thank you so much for tuning in to Railbirds TV, and we'll talk to you next time.